everyone's favorite Tesla accessory, skid plates. I mean, when you think of buying or owning a Tesla, everyone clearly thinks about skid plates first, before insane acceleration or body kits or crazy accessories. In all seriousness, at first you may think this is a little unnecessary and overprotective, but after seeing some horror stories of major underbody damage from minor protection failures, combined with living in the rougher driving of the upper Midwest, I think getting stronger metal skid plates is close to a must-have up here to prevent five-figure invoices for damage. And they may even make the car ride quieter too. Installation is fairly easy and quick as well. So let's jump in. Let's get into some details on these skid plates. I specifically got the Model 3 skid plates from RPM Tesla. They have both front and back skid plates for sale, with the front being far more important than the back, but the back helps protect vital parts underneath too. They are made from 1 8 inch thick powder coated aluminum, and on the interior side they have 1 8 inch thick urethane foam for sound dampening. The aluminum is a huge upgrade from the OEM covers. Tesla's before 2021 or so had these cloth-like covers that are so weak and flimsy. I've read stories of people hitting puddles and the cover being compromised. And even those were hundreds of dollars to be replaced by Tesla. The scarier stories are when a rock or road debris gets kicked up in there and punctures the cover and rips through a coolant tube or some other critical part of the battery system. On this 2021 Model 3, this cover has been upgraded to plastic, which I will say is much better than the older fabric cover, but I still don't feel great about it holding up over tens of thousands of miles through cycles of four seasons. So yeah, aluminum much greater than cloth fibers and plastic. You will be adding a little weight to the car, about a net gain of five more pounds for the front and about six more pounds for the rear plate. A negligible cost in my opinion. And the RPM Tesla site claims that the urethane foam reduces road noise. I'm not sure how well it does that, and the company even says it may be a minimal five decibels, give or take, but it is something, I guess. I got a great deal on my skid plates, but even if you end up paying full price for these, those few hundred bucks are an expensive insurance policy against the cost of battery damage and replacement. For the first part of the install, you will need a minimum of two jacks to lift up the front and or back of your car. I have these Rhino ramps that worked very well in this case. Just be very sure that whatever you use, that it's rated for your Tesla. These ramps are rated for 12,000 pounds gross vehicle weight, which is more than plenty for a Model 3 and even a Model X. It's probably enough for a Cybertruck even, whenever those specs get settled. But one, I would probably use something more heavy duty on that. And two, I'm willing to bet the Cybertruck probably won't have cloth skid plates. Just saying. You'll need two different sockets for the two different size bolts holding the cover on. I've got two socket wrenches here to help speed up the process of switching sockets. You can see where the bolts are by looking at the covers here. There are nine total bolts I needed to remove to get the old plastic front skid plate off. The great thing about this install is that you use the same OEM bolts. So you take off the bolts and the old skid plate, and then you use those same bolts to install the new skid plate. A big point here. The original installation instructions say to keep the old cloth skid plate on and to simply put the new metal skid plate on top of it. So the old cloth skid plate becomes sort of an additional layer on the inside of the skid plate. However, if you have a plastic skid plate like I do, this will not work. You'll have to completely remove the plastic skid plate and just install the new metal skid plate. The plastic one just won't fit with the metal one. And if you do have an old cloth one, you don't have to keep it on either. That's up to you. For the back skid plate that I'll go over in a bit, you'll need to remove the old skid plate regardless if it's cloth or plastic. So don't fret that your old one isn't still being used. And another important point, notice on the new skid plate that there are these two extra spots for bolts that I haven't mentioned yet. There are two bolts there on the car that live there now. You will need to take those off temporarily before putting on the new skid plate and then just put those bolts back on when the new skid plate is in place. Some people have said that they couldn't get the OEM bolts back on here with the new skid plate in place, saying that the bolts aren't long enough. I personally did not have that issue. My bolts were just long enough and when putting them back on, the metal tabs in this area adjusted and conformed to allow me to screw the bolt in all the way. I believe this was the intention, but if it's not working for you, you can get some longer bolts at your local hardware store. Okay, those are some big important points that I had to cover, but I hope they help you if you had some issues on your install. Once you understand those, it's just simply unscrewing the bolts, putting on the new skid plate, and putting the bolts back on. The back skid plate is the same process as the front, but with an important note of its own as well. The back skid plate has two tabs that are wedged into and hold onto the back side of the car loosely. I believe there is a way to remove the rear skid plate without having to break off these tabs, but
but if push comes to shove and you can't do it, you can break these tabs off. In the original install instructions with the old cloth cover, these tabs weren't a thing. This should just be an extra step if you have a plastic skid plate. Breaking these tabs are perfectly fine. Even if you needed to go back and install the plastic cover again, the bolts secure the cover very well. And another important note on the back skid plate is that there are two plastic Tesla clips, Tesla tabs, or Tesla rivet clips, whatever you like to refer to them as. Anywho, there are two clips that hold the front of the car side of the old skid plates on the sides. You need to get at these two clips and pop them out. There is a little slit on the clip that you can insert a small screwdriver or something similar into, and then you just pop them out. Again, if you happen to break these clips, that's fine as you don't need them for the new skid plate. Mine popped off easily, but I know some can be very stubborn. Again, after you understand these little differences for the back, just pop off the old skid plate and put on the new skid plate using the same bolts. So a quick review and rating. I think the aluminum front skid plate is almost a must have. I actually didn't know that I had a plastic version until I put on my own skid plate. I think if I had the cloth version, I would definitely say that you need this aluminum one, especially up north. The plastic one is definitely a step up and an in-between of the cloth and aluminum, but I'd still lean towards getting the aluminum skid plate for the front if you have a plastic one. For the back, I would actually keep the plastic cover if you have plastic. I think the aluminum is nice, but not absolutely needed here. If I had the cloth back skid plate, I would for sure upgrade then. And now you can rest easy and assured that your Tesla is much, much better protected from road debris, hard objects on the road, and I guess even puddles. And hey, it might even be a little quieter, but you probably won't notice with your T-Swift cranked to 11. Please like and subscribe if this was helpful. I'll see you up north.